So the whole holistic shift really happened um, when I was working in Charleston at a spot called Sacred Roots. You know, the more I learned about herbs and the body healing itself, and we would have so many people come in and out with all these different types of diseases and, you know, ailments and whatnot. And it would always be like the simplest thing. We'd always start with, what are you eating? Like, what are you consuming on the daily basis? Because I, nine times out of nine, it's reversible. And once you pinpoint what it is that you're eating or what it is that's causing these health issues, once you change that up, like, you're healed. What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y, do not ask why. And today, I have a great one for y'all because, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are joined by holistic health coach Renee. Hi. What's up, Renee? <laughs> What's up? How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, Amazing. I'm glad you made it here. I'm glad we made this happen. We spoke yeah. about how this happened. It was yeah. meant to be the way it Definitely. happened. So we're going to do it how it was meant to be. I know that's right. Um, so before we get things started, as you mentioned, uh, you asked, I should say, how I felt. I feel amazing. And a big contribution to that is this little bottle of green delicacy right here, <laughs> which is Magic Mind. Have you heard of it? No, I haven't. I think they're relatively new, but mm -hmm. it's pretty much a productivity shot made of 12 magic ingredients, hence mm -hmm. the name Magic Mind. Makes sense. Um, natural ingredients, you know, it's not like a cup of coffee or anything like that. Mm -hmm. 12 natural ingredients, maca's in it, lion's mane, uh, turmeric. Mm -hmm. But it's to increase productivity, focus, energy, the whole above, mm -hmm. and reduce stress and anxiety. So I've been taking it for like a week and a half now. Mm -hmm. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink juice. I don't drink soda or alcohol or anything like that. So That's when good. I do drink something outside of water, I'll feel if it's good for me and I'll mm -hmm. feel if it's bad for me. Mm -hmm. Like my body will tell me. And this right here, like especially when it comes to like editing or shooting podcasts, which I just took before the episode or anything like that, um, it definitely helps you like lock in, you know, with the focus and whatnot mm -hmm. because. A huge contribution, and I want to get your take on this as well, like a huge contribution to people being stressed and anxious, anxiety, I think like that's like at a all time high now, yeah. is them not doing what they're supposed to do. And I think it's their subconscious mm -hmm. that creates that stress and anxiety, mm -hmm. which is why I like these because it eliminates that procrastination. So when people mm -hmm. procrastinate, it's because they're not focused. And when they procrastinate on stuff that they know they should be doing, then they start getting stressed and anxious yeah. and form anxiety. Yep. I don't think that's just something that you're born with and it comes out of nowhere. You're creating it because you're not focused, you because. know what I mean, on something. So Absolutely. that's why I really love, uh, you know, that's why I really love taking Magic Mind. Mm -hmm. It's really helping me, you know, stay focused with stuff and just be clear. And then once you get stuff done and you alleviate that stress and anxiety you're creating a high frequency in your mind and that's you know what that energy attracts so a lot of positive stuff have been coming my way lately just because i've been focused on doing what yeah. i got to do with day by day and then I left and that. right just stuff has just been you know elevating in my life and you know uh coming out positive so shout mm -hmm. out to magic mind would you like to actually try it yeah like what, listen i'm sold what, what kind of host am i try it out. <laughs> i was looking we at have um I was looking at the ingredients earlier, and yeah. I was like, okay, they got some of my my brain herbs in here, so. Yeah. 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 Is that ginger in there, too? Yeah. You are good. You are good. What else you got? That's good. Yeah. That's good. You have impressive like taste that. buds. I like that. That's you, really good. You know you can get paid for that, like. Oh, with, yeah? With having, like, I saw this. Put me on. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will drop a link to Magic Mind in the bio. Check them out. Yeah, but I like you, that. I saw something on Twitter. This dude is like an ice cream taster. Oh, wow. And he makes, like, six figures or high six figures for tasting Taste ice, ice cream because he has, like, high taste buds. In the wrong profession, I tell you, boy. I tell you. You can get paid know. for anything. You really can. Um, So I love that. let's take it back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where are you from originally? I'm from Monk's Corner. Monk's Corner? South Carolina. Right. <laughs> it's outside of, like, like the Charleston area. Yeah. Yeah. Did you live in Charleston? Briefly. Mm -hmm. um, like, in 2020 to 2021-ish. Yeah. And then in the area in 2022. So, since living in Charlotte, something that I've heard or been advised to do a lot is visit Char Charleston. Yeah. You should. They say it's, like, a lot of 
history and whatever whatever it is that's there but what's the reasons like people say that I should visit or why do you think I should what's in Charleston you know that is important for me to see honestly I feel like it's more of like an ancestral vibe that you get out of Charleston because the history there like, you can look at it in so many different ways because they still have like legit plantations like mm. there wow. that people love to go yeah. you know see and whatnot but Charleston it's you feel like you're supposed to be there mm -hmm. and the people there I I can cuss right yeah. I fucks with people in Charleston yeah. like I love I day, love Charleston <laughs> Very like I love Charleston. Like it was definitely a vibe being there. Mm -hmm. Like as far as family goes, the people I met in Charleston, like the places, it's not a lot of places to go though. But overall, it's just like when you're down there, like you you feel like you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um I heard the food is amazing out yes, there as well. Absolutely. Cuz it's it's you're right next to the ocean. You're right, right? there. Yeah. Like when I used to eat seafood, it mm -hmm. was like everything was always like fresh good mm -hmm. people season well the thing about charleston is a lot of like the white restaurants mm -hmm. the food is still good because everybody in the back is black oh. yeah so it's one of those things but overall you it'll it will be difficult to find like a bad like seafood restaurant yeah out that way so and one last thing that fascinates me with people from charleston mm -hmm. i've come across a few in charlotte is the way they talk yeah. Me being from Maryland, like we can pick up on Southern accents. Mm -hmm. I can tell when I'm south of Virginia. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. sound country, talk country. Charleston is in South Carolina. I can listen to someone from Columbia talk and I'm like, you sound country as hell. But Charleston mm -hmm. is different. Yeah. They don't necessarily sound, they sound country, but also like Caribbean. Yeah. It's it's the Gullah Geechee roots. Mm. Like it's that African root. Like mm. truly, that's really where it comes from. But you don't hear nobody talk like I mean a lot I mean you know it'll sound like similar in a yeah, sense but yeah. it's like once you really start talking to people from mm -hmm. Charleston that's mm -hmm. that is fully original like it's nobody that <laughs> sounds like that yeah it's different yeah. it's different because I'm like it, I'll be having a hard time I'm yeah. not gonna lie I'm like one of my uh, homegirls she from <laughs> Charleston and her family was visiting and we was at a cookout and they would say stuff and I had to ask her like yeah. you know what did yeah. you know what I'm saying that is crazy the Gullah Geechee if you could just give us a brief like rundown of what that is exactly because i have no clue ties to west africa okay like that like the roots of um like the roots of people from charleston mm -hmm. given it depends on which story you want to go with or what you believe but um you know charleston was one of like the biggest ports where yeah. they had um you know slaves come in so a lot of them kept that dialect mm -hmm. like that tongue yeah. So it's hard to like wash that away. Like that's in their DNA. Yeah. So, and again, like when I say, depending on what story you want to go with, like a lot of people were there. Mm. Like people came in, but a lot of people were already there too. Yeah. So it's, it's, nice. it's definitely got those West African ties. Okay. Shout so. out to Charleston. I'm definitely mm -hmm. going to make that trip soon. So yeah. you mentioned earlier that you don't eat seafood. You said yeah. you used to, you don't anymore. Yeah. Um, you're, you're a less holistic health coach, so let's start there first and foremost. What does that mean exactly, being holistic or holistic the term? Yeah, it's literally in the words. You can hear it like it's mm. whole. So mm. it's when you think of terms of health or when you think of like allopathic medicine, like Western medicine, like how we do things here, mm -hmm. um, they pinpoint one thing and then they want to, you know, medicate that. Like mm -hmm. high blood pressure, for example. You get high blood pressure, yeah. they give you a pill, mm -hmm. it's thinning out your blood, it's mm -hmm. lowering your blood pressure, mm -hmm. but it's causing all these other issues now. Right. Versus figuring out, okay, why you got high blood pressure? Mm -hmm. What are you stressed out about? What are you eating? What, you know, are your, um, is your potassium levels balancing your blood? It's like deeper than just, all right, you got blood pressure issues, like we're gonna give you this pill and goodbye. So holistic is all encompassing, you know, mental, physical, spiritual, emotional aspects of health so i like that it's going against the uh the program it's all part of the program yeah, definitely. you know what i mean like as far as with the medicine and that comes from the diet mm -hmm. which we'll speak on which mm -hmm. leads to the medicine it's just a whole hamster wheel that mm -hmm. one leads to the next that they set up so you're just uh the complete opposite of that you're opposed of that just focus on everything that go ahead yes and no okay it's like don't turn to herbs and you broke an arm, like go to the hospital. Oh, yeah. Like, you oh, know, yeah, it's course. necessary yeah, yeah. in certain terms, but it's like, we need to dig deeper into like why we have the issues that we have. The Even source. earlier when you mentioned um, 
the anxiety mm -hmm. that we have. Like a lot of people don't even know it could be like a, you're probably mineral deficient as well. Mm -hmm. Like your brain cannot operate at its best mm -hmm. when you don't have certain vitamins and minerals in your body. And a lot of the junk foods and, you know, processed foods that we eat, it's blocking your body from being able to fully absorb, like, mm -hmm. you know, the healthier foods that you might be eating. Yeah. So it's. And, and drugs and alcohol as well. Because. <laughs> You said it could be a deficiency, but it could also yeah. be something that you're putting in that's yeah. causing harm, like you said, with the food. But, you know, with the drugs and alcohol, and I say that because typically when people are stressed or, ex or anxious, what do they do? They try to find an escape. And it makes no... Through alcohol or drugs, which may provide some type Temporary. of conscious <laughs> escape for like mm -hmm. an hour or mm -hmm. two or three. Mm -hmm. But then once that's gone, you feel even worse than yeah. before. Alcohol is a depressant. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't even really make sense. Right. Like, and I'm not saying I don't have like, you know, a little cup of tequila right. every now yeah, and yeah. then, but it's like, not when I'm down, mm -hmm. like when I'm in my feelings, like yeah. this is just going to make things worse. Yeah. I recently stopped drinking alcohol. Why? Why? Because the, the reason I, or what I mentioned earlier, as far as using it as an escape, that's one of the reasons. And for two, it mm -hmm. just was not beneficial mm -hmm. at all. And it mm -hmm. was just causing... Especially over the summer. Over this summer, I partied hard. Like, mm -hmm. people know I could turn up. People know I love Henny. Come on, Hen dog. That's, that's my, <laughs> like, I, I, like, that's my thing. And, like, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, used to drink every weekend. Sometimes twice on weekends. Mm -hmm. But especially, like I said, this summer, with Day by Day, when I really started taking it serious, mm -hmm. here's how my weekends would go. Mm -hmm. My weekends have to be crunch time for this as mm -hmm. far as editing and putting stuff together, scheduling, yeah. shooting, everything. Weekends have to be crunch time. I work a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So my weekends would come around and I would be like, okay, bet. I'm going to dedicate the weekend. I'm going to edit. Da, da, da. Saturday comes. Saturday morning. I work out. I'm doing my work or whatever. Yeah. I get a call or a text. Yo, we out here. It's jumping. What's up? Da, da, da. Or it's a cookout. Da, da, da. I'm like, That's all right, it. fuck it. I'm going to be for an hour. That's I'm not going to drink. Yeah. I go, yeah. end up drinking. Yep. Next thing you know, I'm out till 1, 2, 3 in the morning. Yep. I come home. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll just do my work tomorrow, mm -hmm. Sunday. Sunday comes, I'm hungover. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like doing shit. Like we said, how mm -hmm. the drugs, alcohol, food can cause, can lead to the depression and anxiety because yeah. it can, you know, be a void or a block. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm, I'm now I'm anxious. Now I have stress. Not because it just came from nowhere, but yeah. because I didn't handle my business. Yeah. But instead, I got drunk. Now I'm behind the curve. Now I'm stressing. Now I'm anxious because of that. Because of trying to find the escape, like exactly. we talked about. So I just, and plus health reasons. I'm real big on health and wellness. I work out every day. And, yeah. you know, I, I drink at least a gallon every day. Like, I'm big on, you know, treating my body right mm -hmm. and exercising and whatnot. And it just wasn't helpful for, helpful for that. It's not. Yeah. Especially for women. Like, I wish women, like, just knew more so, like, how trash it is. And not, again, not saying don't do it. But mm -hmm. like you said, like, turning to it, you know, for that escape. Yeah. Like, it literally dehydrates your cells. like, poison yeah. to your cells. Like, it's. So many of us have like liver issues at a young age mm -hmm. and you're trying to figure out why. And it's like because your liver is sitting up trying to filter out all these toxins from what you're putting in your body. Yeah. Just give it a break. Yeah. Give yeah. Break and, and, it's, and nobody likes to drink water. Ain't that fucking crazy? Y'all <sighs> drink, guzzle down some alcohol. But I've literally had people that's like, I don't like, I don't drink water. I'm like, don't you like don't drink taste. it at all? Like, I think the wildest shit to hear is I don't like how water tastes. What the fuck type sense do that make? Hold up now. Water got a taste. Break it down. Water. Well, well, I'm, I'm going to let you break it down. Okay, because I'm going to let you break it down. I'm going to let you break it down. <laughs> water does have a taste. Yes. Water does have a taste. And a feel. I don't know about the feel part. Like a crisp. Like you got good crisp uh, water. Some water is kind of slick. It's like. So what are the, that you know of, the different tastes and feels of waters? <laughs> Let's kind of lay them out right now. I feel like spring water always just is more, like to me it's more crisp. Like it's yeah, like typically it's going to be naturally alkaline. It has like naturally occurring like mm -hmm. minerals in it. So yeah. like the waters in the glass bottles, top mm -hmm. tier, like Aquapana, yeah. Mountain Valley. Mountain Valley, that green Listen, bottle. Listen, that's, that's that it right, right there. there. My, my nephew likes to drink that because he's like, oh, it's beer. It's like it's not. Yeah, yeah. Boy. Oh, because he drinks the sparkling, the carbonated. No, no, just the regular one. Like he. Yeah. Just because I have it. Imagination <laughs> is a powerful thing, is it not? And his friends, like you know, they're like, "Oh, is that?" You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, beer or something? Like, no, but it's it's a fancy bottle. But all the waters and the glass bottles, like, are always just. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Well, this 
I'm not gonna give it's them a plug. It's all right. Fuck it. It's okay. That's what I, you I, had. No, I was ready to say I didn't want to give them a plug, but fuck it. It's great value. But it's <laughs> purified water, which is my backup water. Mm-hmm. Anytime I don't have my mm-hmm. bottled spring water, then purified mm-hmm. is the backup. Right. And plan C when we're in absolute uh, you know, ground zero, then we go out the sink. But <laughs> purified compared to spring. How do you feel about that? What is the difference, first and foremost? I don't even know the difference. I just know spring um, tastes better. Yeah, alkalinity. Like, mm-hmm. your purified waters are all typically, mm-hmm. more often than not, mm-hmm. are going to be, like, lower on the pH scale. So Aquafina, Dasani, the expensive ones, for no reason, like, yeah. they're probably, like, a four on a pH scale. Uh-huh. Whereas, like, your spring waters are probably going to be, like, neutral 6.5, like, and up. Like, you know, Evian probably is, like, an eight. Mm-hmm. Um, Iceland is, like, an 8.8. Like, I like so Iceland. I love Iceland. So how does that... Uh, pH work as far as water, where should it be on the scale? It depends on what you care about. Like for me, like I'm, I want, and I'm not saying like I'm all alkaline because Mm -hmm. too much alkalinity, like you can have like, like get alkalidosis. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like one of those like super Dr. Sabi, you know, respect to Dr. Sabi though, but you know, a full alkaline diet is, it can be detrimental to your health as well. especially like if you're not trying to heal from something Mm -hmm. but if you are like you know just trying to be more like you know health conscious and things like that it's best it's just best to drink your alkaline spring waters yeah so So get on your spring water and stop talking that (laughs) water don't taste good shit yeah some does not taste as good but still like that that shit is crazy to hear stop drying yourselves out and it's like, if you tell someone, I've noticed this recently, if I tell someone, yeah, I don't drink, like people that know me for drinking, cool. If I tell them I don't drink no more, mm-hmm. they know me for that, so that can surprise mm-hmm. them. But like, if it's outside of that, people may casually know. And like, if we go out and I'm like, nah, I don't drink, they're like, what? They look at me crazy. Yeah. But I'm like, would you do the same thing if I said I don't do coke? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> alcohol ain't healthy for you. Yeah. And I'm not trying to sit up here and sound all wholesome because, again, just on New Year's, hey, I had a drink. Hey, I it's stopped, balanced. Yeah, I, I stopped. Of, November's when I stopped. And then New Year's, I went back home, and I kind of had, like, a super size me moment. And what I mean by that is I did shit knowing that was bad for me just to remind me how bad it was for um. me. I don't eat beef or pork. I ate beef. And I drank alcohol and I felt like shit when I was back home. So I'm like, okay, that's why I don't do it. Yeah. So people know me for drink. I'm not trying to sound wholesome, but I'm just saying, like, you know, like, when I do say it now, like, I don't drink, people are like, what? Crazy. They go, man, stop playing. I'll give it a day. Here, take this. But that's just what we live in now. It's it's normal. Yeah. I feel you. Because when I stopped eating meat, Mm -hmm. like, it was like, you're not eating meat. You're not eating fish. Right. Like, and I'm from the area, you know? So it's it's different. All right. So let's talk about. Your diet now, what does it consist of? Plants, whole foods, like a lot of chickpeas, lots of walnuts, lots of quinoa, lots and lots of fruits. Mm -hmm. Like it makes me feel better. Like I used to be 240 pounds, so it's like a part of me didn't, well, lots of parts of me didn't know my relationship with food was affecting like my body. Mm. So it was like, like how you said, you know, you turn into alcohol for an escape. Like yeah. I would turn to food for an escape. Stress eating. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I used to be hell on like honey buns and <laughs> like zebra cakes. Don't ask me why. Mm. Um, but like I had like <laughs> a heavy, like junk food addiction. Yeah. And the more I dig into like holistic health, like the master teachers, like Dr. Africa, um, he always would point out how a lot of our issues with food is related to our emotions. So it's like if you mm-hmm. turn to sugary foods, and I'm saying everybody, mm-hmm. but if you are someone who tends to turn to sugary foods, mm-hmm. um, sometimes that can mean like you're lacking love or you have mm-hmm. an issue like giving love or receiving love. Mm-hmm. So it's deeper than just. I want some candy. Yeah. It's like you know this trash. Like yeah. you know it's <laughs> rotting you from the inside out. Mm-hmm. You know this red dye for forty is fucking up your liver, but you still eat it. Yeah. It's like you know a delicious suicide. That's what Dr. Tal would call it. Like mm. wow. so, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that's but, mm-hmm. that's interesting. I like the fact that you said a craving for sweets can be a lack of love, mm-hmm. if you would, mm-hmm. then I guess I need love. Call me LL. And I only say that because I'm not saying I eat a lot of sweets. Yeah. I do have a sweet tooth, but yeah. I crave. Anytime I eat, yeah. you know how it goes. Whenever we eat a meal, we're like, yep. damn, I need something sweet now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the type. Yeah. I'm the type. I, yeah. I still want something sweet. Yeah. But it's like psychologically, I know like it 
like I know when I'm when I'm having like these cravings. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes I just letting just letting y'all know like mm-hmm. these cravings could not be your cravings. Like what do you mean? Parasites have a mind of their own. Mm-hmm. And depending on your diet and what you eat and consume on a daily basis, you could you could be full of parasites. Where can parasites be found? Is it just meats or fruits as well? Parasites are in flesh. So um so only meat is what you're saying. <sighs> And I'm not saying like if you eat a burger, like you're definitely gonna have some parasites. It's it's just you might. <laughs> I mean, but if you oh you said you might. I think mm-hmm. if you eat a whole bunch of beef and especially yeah. pork and not detoxing and yeah. not drinking your water, like yeah. you are this is an, it's an infestation that could be going on inside your body. Yeah, and, and that don't go nowhere. That's what yeah. you know what I'm saying it doesn't get digested and whatnot. Yeah. And and it damn. festers. You gotta think about it. Like animal flesh will sit up and fester in your system. Like mm-hmm. that's why people should be spanked. Mm. <laughs> yeah, what you eat is how yeah. it goes in and what comes out. I'm sorry. I just got pissed because I said and whatnot. Go for my, it. My mom, I, literally the word and whatnot, my mom <laughs> pointed it out. She's like, you say and whatnot. Where did that come from? Mm-hmm. It's a habit. And yeah. anytime I hear myself do it, I get pissed. So yeah. my job for the rest of the next 40 minutes is to not say and whatnot. Okay. Um, call me out on it if I, I do. I will. Thank you. Gotcha. So one thing that leads to, or one thing within like family diseases Mm -hmm. is people like to label it as generational Mm -hmm. or it's uh, hereditary. Mm -hmm. I've always been opposed to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get your take on that. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. Oh, that's hereditary. As in, because I literally because I have it, it's in my blood. You being my child, you will have it too. You're set up for failure. Yeah, and I'm and I'm like, no, it's not because it's in your blood. It's because y'all in the same household mm-hmm. and y'all eat the same mm-hmm. foods. Mm-hmm. I haven't done any direct studies or anything mm-hmm. like that towards it, but to me, it just makes the most sense in the world. So yeah. I just want to get your take on that when people say that you know they have a hereditary disease. Yeah. Um, that's have, passed down from their parents and everything. They just pass down the same eating habits. Yeah. Like, that's 99% of it. Is there such thing as any of these diseases, like high blood pressure, high cholesterol? Like, can that, in fact, be hereditary? The thing is, your body is meant, is created to heal itself. So let's just mm-hmm. say for some, for whatever... You're eating all the things that you should be eating. Mm. You're breathing, you know, you're mm. keeping stress out your life or maintaining yeah. or, you know, managing it as best as you can and yeah. everything else. And somehow, somehow you get this, this, this affliction. Yeah. Your body can heal from it. Mm. Just switch things up. Yeah. Like disease does not live in, disease only lives in like a, an acidic environment. Mm. So it's like if, like for example, how you said high blood pressure. Mm. No, high blood pressure just, doesn't want to speak on it. It's not running a family, but uh-huh. it can. Like I can sit up and say, like, oh yeah, my daddy had it, mm-hmm. my granddaddy had it, his daddy had mm-hmm. it. Yeah, because all y'all sitting up eating the same, same bullshit, the yeah. same shit, drinking, yeah. Living the same you know, lifestyle. heavily stressed out. Black yeah. men be so stressed out. Yeah. Like, and that's what's passed down. Mm. Like, how so? <laughs> You being holistic and your diet, mm-hmm. when did this start? How did we even get here? So I lost like 50 pounds. Like in like my first 50 pounds was easy to lose, but I was eating like microwave dinners and everything else. So it's like I'm not impressed by weight loss. Like I that didn't it I was very unhealthy and what I did it, not feel good. Oh, so you're saying you're not impressed because even when you lost the 50 pounds, oh, yeah. you still felt like shit? Yeah, like people lose weight quick, like uh-huh. off of keto diets and whatever else, mm-hmm. but it's like long-term, like stuff like that, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is not, you know, it's, it's not sustainable long-term. Like mm-hmm. you're destroying your organs from the inside out. Melanated beings, like we have to understand, like we are built biologically, molecularly different than mm-hmm. everybody else. Yeah. It just is what it is. In we can't way. eat. You know, yeah, shout out to, the, yeah, to my yeah. people. But we can't eat like everybody else. We yeah. can't do things like everybody else. Mm-hmm. It. What's the question again? 
<laughs> well, I was just asking because you said, uh, you know, even though you lost the weight, that's oh, right. still only half of the battle. Right. So um, maybe the visual just looks good, but the inside can right. still be kind of fucked up if off. you're not doing it properly. Right. So you lost the first 50 pounds, mm-hmm. but you still felt the same. Right. Like, okay. I just didn't feel good. Okay. So the whole holistic shift happened when, you know, I started learning about CMOS, learning about Dr. Sabi, learning about Dr. Africa. I feel like that's everybody's, like, basis. Like, mm-hmm. and it's so disrespectful when I get on the internet and they're like, oh, Dr. Africa, I mean, Dr. Uh, Sabi was a quack. And it's like, this man was healing people, like helping heal people. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, healers know they're not really healers. Like they guide you to heal yourself. So the spark started when I'm like, all right, Let's try the sea moss out. Let's see what this is. Yeah. And essentially, it's a sea vegetable. Long story short, you got mm. you know your land vegetables now, and you got your sea vegetables. So yeah. it's a very mineral rich, nutrient dense sea veggie. Mm-hmm. So when I got on that, started feeling different, started feeling better. Like my digestion was on point. I don't like being bloated. So when I you know got a taste of that, I'm like, all right, they they on to something. Like let me let me see what's up with this. Mm-hmm. So the whole holistic shift really happened um, when I was working in Charleston at a spot called Sacred Roots. Shout out to Ket at Sacred Roots, and everybody there like that's family. And you know the more I learned about herbs and the body healing itself, and we would have so many people come in and out with all these different types of diseases and you know ailments and whatnot and. It would always be like the simplest thing. We'd always start with, what are you eating? Like, what are you consuming on the daily basis? Because I, nine times out of nine, it's reversible. And once you pinpoint what it is that you're eating or what it is that's causing these health issues, once you change that up, like, you're healed. Yeah. Like it's, I mean, it's a journey essentially. But yeah. when I saw that, I was like, "Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely on board. I can't work here and still be eating like trash. I can't work here mm-hmm. and my mind still, you know, be off. Like I'm a student and yeah. I love being a student. So that's yeah. what really, that's what really did it. Nice. So then, okay, the self awareness and the realization kicked mm-hmm. in. So how did it start from there? What was the fir- What were the first actions that you took? I locked my hair and I stopped eating meat. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, you know, and it could be like, you know, kind of cliche or whatnot, but I just realized, like, I already knew what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. It just, I just didn't do it. And it wasn't until, like, I just felt like, you know, it was like a shift that happened in my life. And I was like, you know what? Just what are you waiting on? Like, just get to it. So I went straight cold turkey. I remember the last meal I had with my mom at River. Um, front landing in Charleston, and after that, I was like, I'm I'm good on this. Like, yeah. what let's was see. that? What was that meal that you had? It, it's Charleston, like, and it was a it was one of them restaurants. Uh-huh. So it was like hush puppies with like some bacon bits. I didn't even know he was putting bacon on it, but I on just top ate, of the hush puppies? yeah, with some That's like different. shrimp, and I got like some pasta and whatever else. Uh-huh. Yeah, like some like a pasta dish yeah. with some seafood. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well. Of course, now you probably won't say as much, but in the moment, was it good at least? Oh, it was great. Yeah? Yeah, it was really good. Nice. <laughs> well, first, why you said the first two things you did was lock your hair and stop eating meat. Mm-hmm. So let's start with the hair. Mm-hmm. What was the purpose of locking the hair? I, Your hair is antennas, you know, and it it's a spiritual thing. Like, it's an extension of your nervous system. Mm-hmm. So when I heard that, it was like, I want to experience that. Like, I want to, like, you know, dig when deeper into what? that it's an extension of your oh, nervous okay. system. Right, yeah, you. like, it's like gotcha. it's a spiritual thing. And I'm yeah. like, well, let me see, like, you know, if they're on to something. Uh-huh. Like, I want to connect with my ancestors. Like, I want to, you know, become more in tune with, like, who I am, the universe, God, everything. So yeah. it's true. Yeah. It's, 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 I feel like I've opened myself up to, you know, how they say, like, vibe higher and whatnot. Like, mm-hmm. you are, like, on a different, you vibrate differently. Your energy changes when you when lock you, it. You know, so what does the locks do, like specifically that unlocks, no pun intended, mm-hmm. that <laughs> you know, like um, connection, if you would, or that different frequency. Like, mm-hmm. what does the actual locking of the hair do? Mm-hmm. So it, so like I said, you know, it's, it's your antennas mm-hmm. essentially, and if we're talking about it being an extension of the nervous system, that's your brain, that's your nerves, that's that's all encompassing your spine. So it's like you open yourself up to receive more downloads. That's how I look at it. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like it being there, it's a connection to 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 a higher power that I can't fully explain. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like when you cut that off, 
you could potentially be cutting off those downloads. Mm -hmm. So in my book, like in my mind, it was like, let me just let me just see if these people like that say that are on to something. Let me see if they know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Like I just feel like ever since that happened, like so much things have changed in my life. Like so yeah. much has shifted. Like, you know how they say like your third eye is opening, mm -hmm. like your pineal gland and whatnot. Like that's that's really on point. Mm -hmm. Um, whenever you do certain things to decalcify it, because we were so much is in us, like sugar, for example, will mm -hmm. calcify your, your pineal gland. And the reason why you want something like this open is to be able to receive more from mm -hmm. your environment, from from your ancestors, from, you know, information is yeah. is spiritual. Like yeah. it's yeah, something to be experienced. Two things. One, mm -hmm. my, I like to say my third eye is open. It's, mm -hmm. It may not be exactly through the gland you were speaking of, because mm -hmm. my third eye actually opened when I did seven no three four five six seven grams of shrooms on a cruise ship okay <clears throat> listening to Jimi hendrix that's mm -hmm. why he's tatted on my leg sorry okay if I'm ashy. i am ashy very <laughs> it's okay jimmy on my What's leg that? and that's why the poster i just you yeah. know ver love Jimi hendrix but um yeah i was listening to hey joe on a cruise ship off of seven grams of mushrooms mm -hmm. and wow. i just it just it's, it's it happened it happened right then and there mm -hmm. it was crazy I, I literally that was the first time i actually left like this realm for a second and I realized wow and then since then I spotted an owl and I spotted two vultures I'm real big on signs and yeah, shit like that absolutely so you know the owl represents wisdom um the the vulture and this was after my grandfather passed who was the most wise he was master Yoda oh, wow. and then the two vultures first it was one vulture then he came back a week later with a friend vultures even though people have a negative stigma around them mm -hmm. vultures represents a new you, because what do vultures do? They eat roadkill. They they actually good. They prevent disease, so they get rid mm. of remains. So it's like okay, your remains. It's time to get rid of the remains. Necessary. There's a new you coming, and I feel that. Um, I love that. So and I'm, not to say like uh -huh. the hair is the only way to you know. It's, oh yeah, it's I know. So many different. Yeah, yeah. Ways. That's why I said. That's why I said it. And I mean, shrooms. People can say what they want. I don't take them anymore, but people can say what they want. Mm -hmm. But it's a plant. It is. I've I've had my experience, and let me tell you, what a shroom does is it heightens wherever you're at. So I feel like people who yes. have said that they've had a bad trip, mm, are you a pessimistic? Like you know what was going on like yeah. in that time? Yeah. Because when I tried it with my best friend, yeah, I was happy the whole time. Yeah. I had the best shower, and it's so random, but it's like I remember this entire day. It was our friends living, yeah, which is like Thanksgiving, but mm -hmm. you know, we call it friends living. Yeah. And the whole day, like I was looking at the ground, breathe. Literally, yo, it was breathing. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because people think I'd be like. Here's the thing with shrooms, and I think it's subjective because, I, like you said, people with bad trips. Mm -hmm. Shrooms, you don't see Bugs Bunny. Bugs Bunny ain't gonna pop I up. Like they them. say, it's a losing the gym. Bugs Bunny ain't gonna pop up, but. Them. Things with vibration, mm. people, plants, That's what it is. grass, all that shit comes to, to life, life even more. Yes. It's already alive, but you yes. really really see that mm -hmm. shit and that's why i you know was such an enthusiastic <laughs> of shrooms like not i didn't do it like hey i'm partying i'm on yeah. shrooms i'm fucked up yeah no i used to call them journeys mm -hmm. they weren't just like mm -hmm. i called them journeys yeah. like dead ass mm -hmm. like and yes like you said trees would yeah you know t not you talk would, to you. they would yeah yeah it was, you would see it was it. yeah like i would tell my friend like i remember when like i literally said i said friend mm -hmm. the brown is grieving she said what are you saying i yeah. said the brown is grieving she said uh, do you mean the ground is, is breathing i said bro i don't know what's happening yeah but i know i'm very happy but you I'm, know what's I'm, happening i was so happy and i was in such a great mood i yeah. mean usually I, i'm i'm not a moody person yeah. like either way like yeah. i you know i'm a woman i have my emotions uh -huh. but overall like the experience was I've not had a bad trip. Can I share my most recent? Please. This was like two years, but I've been taking it for two <laughs> years. I'm not gonna hit my guy up, but so I'm camping. First off, if I, if I could recommend Damn. anyone doing shrooms, definitely do it when you're in a nature setting. Okay, definite. Nature you gotta setting. go outside. Matter yeah. of fact, just not to cut you off, but my yeah, girlfriend, yeah. whenever she did do it, she said she didn't have a good experience. And I was like, where were you? And she was like, inside. inside. No, you have, mm -mm. It's, it's meant to be with nature. So do yes. shrooms in a nature setting. Mm -hmm. I actually go bike riding throughout the city with a playlist when I'm on shrooms. 
That shit is amazing. I mean, I'd, I'd be gone for like six hours, but I digress. My favorite <laughs> shroom story, besides the third eye opening with Jimi Hendrix, I'm camping with my family. Mm-hmm. Whew. This shit was just so amazing. All right, so I'm camping with my family. I have a shroom music playlist, which mostly consists of... You want it? I can send it to you. Which mostly consists of artists that are no longer with us in the Mm -hmm. physical. Mm -hmm. A lot of Bob Marley, Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, Queen, so Freddie Mercury. Uh, So just a lot of artists that are no longer here. Rick James, Tina Marie. So we're at the campfire. The sun is down. The campfire is going. <laughs> and I'm listening to my playlist. Boom, the shrooms kick in. I'm like, bet, let's do this. Let's, let's go for the ride. <laughs> Got my playlist in. And two, um, two things happen. One, as the music's playing, I look up and you can see the trees through the light from the flame. You know mm-hmm. Bohemian Rhapsody Mm-mm. by uh, Queen? So it's a part in that song where it's like a group singing, is this the real life? Okay. Is this just fantasy? So it's it's more than one person singing. Yeah. I look up at the trees and I literally, and then if you know the music video, you'll get me. I'm looking at the trees and it's them singing through the trees, singing wow. down. Wild as shit ever. But here's where it really got wild. So I'm looking at the campfire. I'm looking at the flame. Mind you, I'm listening to all dead artists. Every single song that came on while I'm high on shrooms that had a dead artist, I'm looking at the flame, and each time it was a performance from the dead artist through the flame. Stop. I bullshit you not. Wow. Man. Fire and Desire by Rick James and Tina Marie. I know that was lit. lit. I swear to you, throughout the whole song, there were two flames mm. performing that mm. song in front of me. The whole song. As soon as the song is over, the two flames kind of go away and it just mm-hmm. blend into the regular yeah. fire. That's crazy. crazy. I yeah. wish I was there, but you painted a very vivid picture. Yeah, it was amazing. That was amazing. Did you do like the chocolates or just like the actual like the actual shroom? plants? I don't yeah, do the chocolates. I, don't like the chocolates. I tried it once, but it didn't do anything. I think it's very diluted. I think you should yeah. either just eat it straight or yeah. do it through the tea. You can I'm make not tea a fan out of the it. chocolate. Yeah, nah, you can definitely do it through the tea, but I just. I just, um, you know, haven't gotten there yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So since we're on this topic, weed, did you used to smoke? Were you a weed smoker? In college. In college and stuff. Habitually. Yeah. More Me's- recently have shifted mm-hmm. in Same. my consumption. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I just realized weed was making me dumb. Being totally honest, like in school, like I enjoyed it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I was smoking Bad to bad. And this is when Kush and OJ had just dropped. Cause I went to Coastal Carolina. Shout out to Myrtle Beach, Conway mm, area. I and know that was a vibe. what? This was yeah. 09. Like I was in school in 09. Mm. I feel like so much good music came out in 09. 09, let me just say. Yeah. 09, 2010 was, yeah. But the, yeah, that's when Kush and OJ had came out. And let me, yeah, let me I was, ask you. Mm-hmm. Weed ro- like weed rollers, the raw papers, yeah. Do you remember where you were the first since we're speaking of Cushion OJ? Mm-hmm. Do you remember where you were the first time you heard up by Wiz Khalifa while you were high? I, I remember exactly where I was. I was having a listening party with the person that I was with at the time, and you know, they was a super Wiz fan. Um, and it was like black lights, and it was I just remember looking up and it was just like a vibe like it was a super vibe i said run that shit back <laughs> yes. Yes. yeah um we go up, hey. up, up. <laughs> I, that was that was another yeah. like out of body experience the first yeah. time i heard that yours sounded lit mine was yeah. a little more trapped out so i was at a <laughs> playground and it was me and a few of my friends what we would do was because we weren't old enough to like buy Rello. So we would have someone from the gas station get us a Rello and we would all smoke at the park, roll up our Rello, Rellos of some fucking Reggie. You know what I'm saying? They split like <laughs> a, all four of us on one blunt. Mm-hmm. And my man pulls out his phone. Wasn't even an iPhone at the time. Pulls out, I think it was like one of those Virgin Mobile rumors. He was like, hey, y'all listen to this. So we at the park. He plays it on his speaker, puts it in the middle. And we just like, yo, what the wow. fuck? Shout out, to, shout out to Cushion OJ. That is an absolute classic. It's a classic. Yeah. You want to know what I can't stand, though? They change Never Been. Like, the it's beats. totally yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. I, I think they did happened. that on another song as well. 
They did. I can't think of what it is. Never been in one more song that they did for uh, Cush and Oja. They Ooh. also did a few tracks. It's a few weird songs that that happened to. Uh, Cabin Fever has a few songs like that. And ONIFC, which is a great Wiz That's mixtape. a great, yeah. Yeah, a few, a, great. a few beats on those are changed Switched as up. well. Yeah, That's I, crap, I don't that. understand that. I was so hurt with Never Been. Me like, too. I don't want to YouTube to listen to the original Me version. Too, it's trash. Bruh. It's too pitchy. Like, yeah, that's definitely, definitely has something to do with like royalties and sampling and, sampling yeah, 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 and all I that. Because they low key did the same with Nipsey's uh, Victory Lap album. Mm. I noticed. Blue Laces 2 doesn't have the same snare anymore mm. on Victory Lap. If I'm tripping, let me know. But y'all go ahead and listen to it. <laughs> I think the snare is a little different on Victory Lap for Blue Laces 2. Um, but yeah, when Wiz did it, man, I was, leave it where it's yeah, yeah, I yeah, 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 I was, I was definitely disappointed, but vibe. we were speaking before as far as just we today, mm-hmm. me and you have the same mindset, I think on this, but I want you to speak on it since we became illegal, legalized, like they don't pinch down on it. I wanted to say and what not so bad. Good job. Hey. Since, they, <laughs> since they don't pinch down on it, I think that's the perfect reason, perfect time to add shit to it because that's what they're doing uh, it's it's not the same mm-mm. and and like i said i i i wasn't that i was not dumb mm-hmm. like when i would smoke mm-hmm. like in, in in school i could focus like i'm getting work done like i'm mm. you know what i'm saying but i don't know in the last like few years it was like i feel dumb like i can't remember much and, you know, of course, this is going to be the same experience with everybody else. But that's super dinked out, like yeah. crazy names and all that stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I, it's something up with it. Like and, you know, anytime they know like we're heavy on something, they're going to fuck with it. Yeah. Like best way to hide is in plain sight. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. That's one of my favorite quotes. Yeah. I'm not dumb. If it's too good to be true, then it's too good to be true. Like, Definitely. okay, now it's legal and okay, like, and we're, we, yeah. And we know, like we said before, we know the point is to make bullshit food, to fuck us up, to get on the bullshit medicine and the whole cycle. So, of course, like, why not do the same with the weed right, since it's exactly. legal? They're like, oh, shit. And they know that we love weed. Yep. I mean, everyone does. Yep. It's not just a black thing. Everyone oh, yeah, loves everybody. weed. So, they know people love weed. Mm-hmm. So like okay, let's um yeah, let's give them what they want. But mm-hmm. while we had it, hey, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah put a little, little extra pesticides. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and hook it up too. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I believe so. We're gonna piss some yeah. people off. It's cool. Yeah, it's Listen, okay. The, the, the truth hurts. I'm not. I don't Did know. Snoop Dogg stop smoking weed. That was that was that was a marketing. Oh, his uh, ass. Moves. Well, here's the thing, and that's not but a pawn. And and that's the thing though. When people say. <laughs> When people like us say this weed has this and that in it, the first thing people will say, well, Snoop Dogg smoke, where is smoking? They shit is da-da-da-da-da. Y'all ain't smoking they shit. <laughs> if I could grow my own, like, you know, have my own space where mm-hmm. I'm, you know, X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. like, that. That's but that's what, different. Yeah. Like Mike Tyson, Snoop Dogg, Wiz, they have their own strands. They have their own farms. They know what's going totally on. It's different. a difference between that and you going to a dispensary where you have no idea no how it's made, how it's produced, and you smoking it. That's a huge difference. Yeah. So when people say, oh, Wiz, you ain't on that level. Yeah. You ain't in a tax bracket, so you ain't smoking the weed yeah. they smoking. So what's the difference? It's something wrong anyways. Like, what is it? talking about smoking like back to back to back to back all day long like what Stay are, you, high. y'all must be like because <laughs> y'all must be just pulling the smoke in y'all mouth and just like blowing it out because that's are what you, a lot of people i notice like do when they are you talking about people that say they have to be high like, like all day seven? long like yeah. i mean but smoking back to back i mean I, can, I know i'm only speaking on my experience mm-hmm. but all that smoking makes my stomach hurt like it makes me sick like after i smoke too long so it's like how are y'all yeah. Goodness. Plus, I would just feel burnt out. But I think it's to the point now where they're in it. Like, so it's it's a part yeah. of them. Like, I don't have an addictive personality. So once I even get close to being that shit, like, damn, I feel burnt out. I pull out. But I think they're in it. Like, if you ask them to just stop right now for a week, it'd be tough for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Because they're, they're in it. So they can move. They can function. Me, I could not function if I'm high all day. I'm not getting shit done. This is the second time you said addictive personality. And it's like, every time you say it, it just makes me think about so much. And it's like, yeah, like, I never really considered, like, this is like a personality trait in people to be, like, super attached to something. Yeah. That's eye-opening. It's it's real. And I was thinking, I was literally thinking about this earlier. I love, 
I'm truly blessed for two traits of mine. One is, or lack of trait, the addictive personality. I do not have an addictive personality yeah. at all. And two, yeah. I'm very self-aware. Yeah. And I have friends, close friends, lost friends to drugs because of the addictive personality. Yeah. And even family that admit they have addictive personalities. Yeah. And that's dangerous. Yeah. And you being Ooh, so, that's dangerous. Yeah, and you being someone who's uh, you know, who's a holistic enthusiast, do you think that's a real thing? Do you think an addictive personality is a real thing? Or do you think that's some type of subconscious thing that they grow and form on themselves and attach to themselves? I'm gonna go with that one. Yeah. Just off the strength of like they keep they're searching for something that they mm. can't get from within. Mm. And it's easy to become attached to something that you feel like is bringing you, you know, some peace or some happiness. But it's like that you are the only person that's responsible for your own peace and your own happiness. So yeah. when you're looking for that outside like that, that's dangerous. And a lot of people look for that mm -hmm. through other people. Definitely. These toxic relationships, Ooh, like you said, you have to find it. it within yourself. If you yeah. don't know how to find it within yourself, if you don't know how to be comfortable with yourself, if you don't know how to love yourself, mm -hmm. then of course you're going to be stuck in these toxic mm -hmm. ass relationships because it's something that you're still trying to get from that person. Mm -hmm. You know it's toxic, mm -hmm. but you're just very, um, in the, very in denial Definitely. about it or whatnot because you still are seeking something from that person. Mm -hmm. As opposed to where if you're comfortable with yourself, if you love yourself, I don't need shit from you. Yeah. What the fuck am I stay in this fucked up position for mm -hmm. when I know it's fucked up? Mm -hmm. What, to get this from you? I can get that from myself. I'm yeah. good. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But a lot of people don't have that. And, yeah, you know, that that's what leads to people being fucked up and holding on to things. You got to yeah. love yourself, find it within yourself. Mm -hmm. And that can alleviate that addictive personality, whether it's through people or through drugs, mm -hmm. whatever. You gotta have value you. yourself. Yeah. Like we, we have such a hard, especially us. Like we have been, boy. I tell you, I love my people. Mm -hmm. We have been through so much, mm -hmm. and we are still like prevailing. And it's like once we really like understand like our true value and what self love really like looks like. Because self love yeah. is also what you are consuming, like what you are yeah. consuming in your relationships, mm -hmm. the food you putting in your body. So, mm -hmm. like once we tap back into like our true power. It's a wrap, like, yeah. collectively. Oh, yeah. I think easily we could take over the world, oh, yeah. literally. And not even on no evil Dr. Evil shit. Like, yeah. we could just literally take our... over the world, but we're mm -hmm. in situations. Like I said, best way to hide is in plain sight. Mm -hmm. They are literally making it to where we turn against ourselves and don't realize our self-worth. Mm -hmm. That's why when people do realize it and they just get that high. Like, yeah. I'm on a high right now. I know yep. you're on a high right now. And yep. not even just because of that, but also because of your diet as well. Right. So when you just be on that high and you really, like, but... you just... Blind. Are, way are you on some Dr. Manhattan shit. Like, you are untouchable, <laughs> unstoppable. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But because of the food, because of the environments mm -hmm. that most of us are placed in, yep. it's just a constant toxin mm -hmm. that keeps us from realizing that. I, th I think someone said uh, in a Prince interview, he said something about they pump some type of toxin throughout ghettos of America. But anyway, I want to ask you this. Like you said, it's tough being black. Just walking out the house is tough for black people. Seriously, like you, we're constantly dealing with generational trauma, whether we realize it or not. Oh yeah, yeah. let me tell you yeah. that epigenetics is so real. Mm -hmm. Like I was reading um, and still reading um, post-traumatic slave syndrome. Mm -hmm. Man, like you, you just don't think about how trauma really does pass down to yeah. your. To... Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I think if we at least can recognize the the way we go about relationships or the way we even go about treating ourselves mm -hmm. it has there's trauma embedded in that somewhere yeah like the lack of self love the way we go about relationships yeah. yeah it gets passed down because if you lack self love or lack affection and so me I, my my mom loves us all she shows it but we were never I was never in an affectionate household so I never really like when I was in relationships with dealing with girls, I'm good with them. But as far as displaying affection, especially yeah. my first relationship, I was fucked up in you that department. How. Right. Because it that in that I would show the same with my children and keep getting passed down. Mm -hmm. That's just one small sample. Mm -hmm. But it's a lot that goes into the generational mm -hmm. trauma. But I want to ask you something involved with that. With the trauma of being a black person every day. 
one thing that we one thing that that can lead to is trying to find an escape which is the reason why a lot of people drink and do drugs in the black community because it's hard every day so they try to find an escape to get that comfort zone so i want to get your opinion and your take on us finding that escape and it can be through it's through many toxic forms you have i think you have good escapes and you have bad escapes mm -hmm. so i want to get your opinion on just why it is that we need to find that escape maybe some beneficial escapes mm -hmm. and then personally you good or bad escapes that you are involved with now in hindsight that you dealt with before a lot of times people just have problems with self and they need that escape because they don't want to think about the things that they've done or the people they've lied to or the situations that they've been in and for some reason like therapy like in our community is i don't even know therapy but it's like it could help mm -hmm. and even if you don't literally go to a therapist sit on the couch and do all that stuff what about doing things that are therapeutic like i love nature like i am a nature yeah. head like i yeah. i love going back home to my mom's house amongst corner like i'll mm -hmm. walk around barefoot my mom would be looking like are mm -hmm. you okay but mm -hmm. eventually like she got to a place where she's like i understand why you do it now like mm -hmm. it's grounding like turning to nature really like releases like ions and mm -hmm. ions can cause like like excess too much positive ions in your body mm -hmm. can cause um disease mm -hmm. like free radicals to run rampant like run rampage in your body and and cause all types of different issues like especially like inflammatory issues so it's like when you put your body on nature mm -hmm. you release those positive ions and n nature gives you those negative ions that mm -hmm. you need to kind of like balance mm -hmm. so if you are constantly trying to like escape from yourself or if you find yourself like constantly trying to run away from who you are it's like I love journaling. Mm -hmm. It's like sometimes you got to take what's in here and just put it out on paper. Mm -hmm. And even if you got to do like letter writing, like sometimes it's like very specific things that has hurt us or people we have hurt. And it's like if you can't literally like go to that person and, you know, write these wrongs or whatever, sometimes writing it down in a letter, like literally to them, it's energetic. Mm -hmm. So it's like, in a sense, de depending on what you believe, like energetically, like you could be, you know, putting that energy out there that, you know, I apologize to you yeah. without necessarily like, apologizing. Yeah. And maybe eventually like you'll get to a place where you can, like if it is like to a certain person. Yeah. But sometimes we be forgetting to like apologize to ourselves. Yeah. Um, one of my very good friends, Ashley, she has a son and she like her son started like hitting himself and whatnot. And she was like, go in the mirror, apologize to yourself and then tell yourself like, you love yourself. And he's like, you know, I love you. Like, I'm sorry, like I did this to you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if we would just take more time to be gentle and have more grace with ourselves, like we wouldn't have to like have to run away so much. Yeah. So, but nature and journaling, yeah. that's my that's my jam. Yeah. I just started yoga too, so. I okay, feel like I nice, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm, yours nature and journaling, mine is nature and and working out mm -hmm. because the escape is good we're not saying mm -hmm. you shouldn't escape because that's holding something yeah, within absolutely. so you should let that out yeah. right because if you have something you know building up whatever it is you should let it out yeah like we said depressants that's not good to try to escape through but yeah. nature yes 100 mm -hmm. i always tell people i'm a huge nature enthusiast i have to live somewhere close to some type of trail oh, or yeah. like a, a field mm -hmm. i have to like that's why i didn't move on wt harris but <laughs> <laughs> um, hiking, like that's I, that's spiritual for me. Crowder's Mountain was like one of the first things I did when I moved down yeah. to Charlotte. Like yeah. I, I just went hiking for my birthday, so I just turned twenty nine. Thank you. I just turned twenty nine on the 29th of November, and twenty and I don't, e, e, say again. The twenty nine. I was just like yeah. numbers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So even before that, the number twenty nine and seven, those numbers just always spoke to me. Okay. And I always knew. I always said. So this could be on record. I always said when I'm twenty nine, something like it's it's going to be a crazy special yeah. turn in life. Tw and it's number twenty nine, right? And um, yeah, and and you know, it started with me stopping drinking, but way before or uh, two weeks before my birthday and all that. But I went hiking on my birthday. Mm. So instead of partying, people was like, "Oh, I know you're ready to party and whatnot." To, you know, get that high or get that good feeling, I was like, I'm taking my ass hiking. 
So I had my playlist together, was listening to a lot of the Andre 3000 album with the wind instruments. But I love it. I went hiking on my birthday, and that shit was just doing that on my birthday, the 29th, I think they call it the golden year, mm -hmm. and then just being with nature, which I'm huge about. Mm -hmm. When I got to the top, I was up there for like an hour and a half, and but that right there, man, Beautiful. that was different. That was different. It's, you breathe different yeah. out there. Like it's it's so therapeutic. That was different. Being active is mm -hmm. so important. Yeah. Like to our health. Yeah, it is. It is. So I'm we've we've, you know, touched on some great things as far as diet, a lot of the mindset and a lot of habits. That's huge, too. I want to talk about real quick habits. Replacing the bad ones with good ones. Yeah. Like how you say, we live life from the inside out. Mm -hmm. So it's like if you feel like you're getting a lot of shit coming to you, mm -hmm. you might got to deal with something internally first. Yeah. So the habits part, I tell you, <laughs> the whole 21 day thing, like, oh, it takes 21 days to, like, you know, form formulate a habit and whatnot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of truth to that. But at the same time, it's like once you make up in your mind, like, this is something that I'm going to do. Yeah. Especially if it's like for the benefit of you and your well-being. Right. It definitely becomes easier to do that. Yeah. Well, if you have self-awareness, because like definitely. we said earlier, people definitely. know that they shouldn't eat that honey bun because yeah. they know it can fuck them up, but they still do it. Like I, my mom, I be I, yeah, I be on my mom's ass about her diet, and she'll be like, yeah, I know, da da da, da but da, da da da, and still do it. So yeah. people be knowing. Yeah. I think it's just that discipline that you form. I, the discipline is the root of so many life changing things because yeah, self awareness is good, but but they may or may not have the self awareness. Be like, we would say they do, and they know it's not bad, but they still go about it. That comes from that dis that lack of discipline. Yeah, I stayed on my mom's ass. She had breast cancer in 2017, mm -hmm. and my mom was a hard down coffee drinker, mm -hmm. and I mean like gas station coffee, coffee, Cheetos, Pepsi, and like mint candies. Oh man! For that, I don't know why that, but that was her thing, was and you know it. Yeah. Like not saying that she sat down and like you know ate them all together, yeah. but that was like like I just like those were her snacks. Yeah. And you know once she ended up um, being diagnosed or whatnot, like I drove straight from Myrtle Beach to Monk's Corner and mm -hmm. like I was just with her and I was like, that's really where my shift came with this holistic stuff. I forgot like that's really what that was. I was like. Mm -hmm. Just seeing her go through that, and yeah. her mom died at well, my grandmother, her mom died at forty nine from breast cancer, mm -hmm. and when she was diagnosed and she just had her moment, and I had to be there with her. Yeah. I, in my mind, I didn't even think twice about losing my mom. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't even I didn't I didn't even think about that I could have lost my mom. Maybe it's like last year. Like yeah. I was just thinking about like, dang, like I could have lost her, but I, that wasn't even on my mind. I was like, oh no, we're gonna you're gonna heal. Yeah. Like she, of course, she still opted to do the chemo, but. This is when I first found out about Sacred Roots, too. Matter of fact, like, we got her some soursop, some anamu, some partiaco, like, you know, herbs that's going to help kill cancer cells and, mm. and things like that. And we totally changed up the way she ate. So we cut out, you know, she cut out a lot of meats. Um, I know she still did from time to time. But she cut out meat. She started eating more fruit. She cut out Cheetos. She cut yeah. out that Coca Cola, like the mint candies. Like she, I don't even think she's had any like since then. Maybe like every now and then. Yeah. But it just goes to show you number one, the body is the body is amazing. Mm -hmm. But number two, it's like don't start formulating new habits because you have to. Like because you know like your your life is on the line. Like now I'm gonna go ahead and like you know switch it up. Like think about like preventative measures too. Mm -hmm. Like and I and I always tell people because they're like, well, I just don't think I could ever like stop eating meat or whatever. And it's like if that's not your prerogative, like that's fine. Mm -hmm. This is what worked for me. Mm -hmm. It started off as a 30 day challenge. Mm -hmm. It's just been almost three years. Plus like, you plus you feel better. Like if you eliminate oh yeah. since I've elim eliminated daily habits, not only a positive shit habit, but I've, I'm on a natural high, mm -hmm. bro. Like this shit. Feels Feels amazing. It feels like so good. I wake up feeling amazing without an alarm clock. Like I, you just really feel like I don't know. It's, it's an just energetic thing because you gotta energetic. think about it. Yeah. And and you know, not I'm not coming down on nobody eating meat. Like like I said, if that's what you want to do, that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. But we gotta think about things on like a chemical level. Like you release um, cortisol when you're angry, mm -hmm. and you know when you're scared. So these animals, like right before they got slaughtered, what do you think they was? Do you think they were just chilling? Mm -hmm. They were scared. They mm -hmm. sitting up looking at people, and I get like you know the consciousness things about. Yeah about animals and whatnot, but they're fearful as well. Like yeah. this is being just doused into their blood mm -hmm. right before they're 
they die. But guess mm. what? That does not transfer. I mean, it doesn't go anywhere. It just transfers on to you. Mm. So you sit up and you turn around and you eat this thing that has this energy in it. And you wonder why you're angry or you wonder why, you know, you're dealing with certain um, emotional issues. And it's like it could potentially be this energetic transfer on so you now you got this animals you know anger <laughs> essentially like yeah. flowing through you and you try to figure out what, what's yeah. going on energy is real it's so real people gonna hear this and i mean let me just be on uh very transparent first and say you know i do eat chicken so you know i, I do be thinking that when you do mention that it's but okay. i love me some chicken <laughs> My plan is when I turn, <laughs> I'm 29, so my plan is when I turn 35 to be fully pescatarian and 40 vegan. But um, anyway, I digress. Very nice. People will hear what you're saying and be like, uh, say again? Baby steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. People will hear what you're saying. They'd be like, uh, she bluffing. That energy stuff ain't real, da 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 da, -da. Oh, yeah. But I guarantee those same people who have that same, you know, negative mindset towards mm -hmm. that i guarantee they living in a negative space mm -hmm. and don't even realize it and because they in that energy it. because yep. they deal yep. with bad habits every day mm -hmm. because they let me let me talk about this because before Talk this we were talking about i post a lot of controversial topics mm -hmm. and we were saying how you know i laugh at people that just comment they literally look forward to waking up and commenting negative shit yeah. on posts yeah whether it's my post like i have posts with hundreds or even thousands of comments and it's just yeah. so much negative shit or you see it on shade room whatever yeah people literally look forward to going on post blogs talking shit. and talking negative bullshit just because it can be a positive it can be a post that don't even warrant exactly. that and they just that's what that's the height of their day and it's like bro you are in such shit i feel stupid honestly like if i'm looking on instagram and i see something that i don't like or i totally disagree with what the hell i look like this is you know what i'm saying like i just keep going about my life it won it won it, it has you engaging with it to that level where you're not saying it won you don't have no control over your energy that's nope. what it is no nope. like if something draws that much anger and mm -hmm. hate out of you where you gotta like talk a all post. type of cash shit on someone's post posts don't raise your blood you got pressure. problems with self yeah I, I, <laughs> and, and again if it's something that i don't agree with or don't like i just giggle I just at it and keep it moving going. Keep it moving. I be telling Why would people. I give that my energy. I be telling people that be on the show. Like I'm like, listen, if a, if a clip, if I post a clip of us that has something that's controversial, it'll be a lot of hate comments. Do not respond. If if you respond to them to laugh them, laugh at them, or if they got you fucked up, if they have your words fucked up, like literally, and you got to clarify, like, listen, mm -hmm. no, that's not what I said. Mm -hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? That's one thing. Mm -hmm. But to go back and forth, yeah. like I had one post, and this one girl, she responded to every single comment. I had to turn off the comment section. I had to tell them, like, listen, stop doing that yeah, shit because all it's going to do is fuck you up. Mm -hmm. It's pulling you into their frequency. Do not respond. Yeah, because they're you, not going to stop. Nah, they're going to they keep go going back, back and, and forth. And, and what you look like going back men, and forth? Grown-ass men that do that shit. So I'm like, do not respond. It's going to fuck, fuck up your frequency. Yeah. If you want to laugh at them, cool, because I do that all day. I be yeah. trolling their ass. I'm like, listen, you was not ready to pull me to your, to yeah. your frequency. I'm going to laugh at you, yeah. like, straight up. And yeah. thank you for the engagement on top of that. <laughs> Need it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to laugh at you about yeah. that. But I, I be telling people don't do that. But, yeah, so it's that energy shit is real, yeah. man. It's, it's like have some control. Yeah, yeah. People focus on high IQ and book smarts and all that. I think e emotional intelligence is mm, very first and foremost a thing that can mm -hmm. be beneficial in life. Because if you ain't got your emotions in check, mm -hmm. then you're fucked. Because mm -hmm. really, emotions is energy. Mm -hmm. And anyone can, you know, lower your energy. And if Thanks. someone has control over your energy, then they got control over your life. Yeah. You're done for. Mm -hmm. Literally over your life. How many people are spending the rest of their life in prison because their emotions mm -hmm. weren't in check? Oof. For two seconds, someone threw off their emotions. And for two seconds, that lack of emotional strength led to them doing something that led to them spending the rest of their life in yeah. prison. Because they ain't got their emotions in check. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, people need to raise their emotional awareness. That's something that is not talked about. Ooh. Nope. Well, especially like with, especially like in, in our community yeah. and in black women. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a woman, so I'm going to touch on that like Talk about every it. time. It's mm -hmm. like we, ooh, we, we will drain ourselves dry, mm -hmm. be dehydrated, all types of bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> just to prove a point yeah. or just to keep an argument going and it's like yeah. you gotta check that 
I tell my friends, like, I love being checked. Check me. Like, mm-hmm. tell me about me. Yeah. Like, how can I become better? And it's like, I, why, I can't. Why so? Why do you like being checked? Because sometimes I'm unaware. Okay. Like, as, as self-aware as I can say I mm-hmm. am, it's like, you know, I don't like to feel attacked. But at the same time, it's like, all right, are you being attacked? Or does this person actually just care enough about you yeah. to tell you about who you are and what you're doing? And this change could make your y'all's relationship better. Well, that's self awareness right there. Mm-hmm. Realizing that you lack awareness is self awareness. <laughs> that's what that is, yeah. right there. And the mm-hmm. thing about it is, like women, like whether you want to admit it or not, like we are emotional beings. Like we feel first and think later. Uh huh. Um, but men are more inclined to think first and then feel later. Yeah. So it's like, you know, just even being aware of that much, like that can help our relationships out better too because it's like, don't go into something just ready to attack. Like, just think for a second, just a little yeah. bit, just for two seconds, yeah. like, and be quiet. Like, I've learned yeah. also too, like, not to so much like react, but just take my time. It's, I'm still a work in progress, but it's life is better that way. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and if you do get angry and if you want to respond on social media, a uh, great tip I've heard was wait 24 hours. Yeah. Because we, we're in a moment, our emotions yeah. are are unbalanced, and we want to respond on social media. And that's why so many people delete a tweet an hour or two after, you know, they're upset about yeah. something. So that could fuck you up, too. Yeah. Speaking of social media, how we even unformally met each other was through social media. We followed yeah, each yeah. other. You were peeping my content. I was mm-hmm. peeping yours. So let's speak about your content, you know, just for a second. I love your Instagram because you have very good quality videos of you spreading good information. Thank you. So is that clipped from a podcast? Like, do you have a podcast yourself or is that just content? I just recently make? started the podcast. Well, on my birthday, August 6th, mm-hmm. um, I started a podcast. It's called Match My Freak. And match my freak, mm-hmm, match my freak podcast, but it's F R E Q, like match my frequency. frequency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, gotcha. No, it's not yeah. one of them. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, because you got me. You actually, you actually, I was like, hold on. You said what? Match your freak. Okay. Yeah. But um, it's it's. It's like a platform where we're able to really like dig into like real consciousness. Like yeah. the I'm not I'm not as active as I plan to be this year, but the few episodes that I do have on there now, you know, is speaking about like our culture and who we are as a people. Like my yeah. first episode was with Dr. Tao in Concord, who owns Juamoto, and it's a raw vegan black owned restaurant. And when you walk in there, it's like, yeah, this is real cultured mm. out. And you know, we were talking about just repairing the culture, like you know, the relationships between black men and in black women yeah. and you know how we're raised and my, my other episode was with um, one of my teachers her name is Asma um, she, well Shaquan and she is a consumer law like mm-hmm. guru yeah. and the beauty of it is it's like I don't want to I want to be able to like bring information to people that's going to help better them um, when it comes to consumer law, we have just been lied to about yeah. so much as far as like, you know, debt collections. And one of my friends asked me the other day, they was like, what do you do with your student loans? I'm like, student loans, mm-hmm. like, I'm not paying that. Like, that's a debt, an mm-hmm. alleged debt that mm-hmm. I don't owe. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if we just learn more about like our rights yeah. um, as consumers in America, like we, like, cause that this is going back. It's like holistic yeah. health and wellness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I had the Melanated Holistic Wellness Fair in Charleston last year, and I had um, Asma come on and speak to us about like you know consumer law and whatnot. But we don't think about finances, like the reason why a lot of relationships end, yeah. um, the reason why people are stressed out. Mm-hmm. And it's like if you don't have any intelligence when it comes to that, or if you don't even know your rights when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. What are you, what are we doing? Yeah. So, so the podcast is is like I said, I'm I'm working on it. Like it, it's still growing and whatnot. But 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 I love it. Like the the videos that I have on my my Instagram page, it was just during summertime and it was mm. you know I can't swim, but I love to be by the pool. Yeah. And I was like, I'm just about to come in here and talk my shit. Like yeah. so. <laughs> and, that, and that's what it is. And you just started. You know, people hit me up a lot about how to start a podcast, and I'm. I'm going to come down on myself. I'm bullshitting heavy on finishing this online course. I like, literally was in my head about that. Yeah. Like, like th- for you. Yeah. I'm yeah. like a third of the, third of the way through. And That's just, good, though. I've just been so busy, but I'm off all next week to finish it. But That's also, good. I want to do, like, consulting. 
mm-hmm. with helping people doing podcasts because mm-hmm. I took an online course and it was very outdated. Yeah. You know, and mine is I've been doing it for four years. I want to tell you what to avoid. Right. I want you to avoid. I went through so much trials and tribulations monetarily, time, energy wise, and I want to alleviate that for people. Yeah. So I want to offer help through that because, like we said, you can't help hold stuff like that within. You got to release yeah. it back out. It's energy that you got to give back out. But, That's what's up. Um, yeah, shout out to you for just starting it. Thanks. You know what I mean? And just doing it. And I want to, you know, encourage you to keep doing it, put more episodes out. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the plan. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So when you got some spare time and you're like, damn, they did say he on my ass about doing it. So yeah, just go ahead and, you know what I'm saying, plug in and talk your mm-hmm. shit and, um, you know, get it off. But uh, I got to get you on there one day. I would love to come on. That's a bad Seriously. Like, I right. really, I, now you want to talk about natural high? When I'm yeah. on other people's podcasts, yeah. that's really a natural high. I that's a bad. Yeah, I love it. So I would, I would love to do that. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, before that happens, I got to thank you for showing up to this one. Absolutely. First and foremost, we, uh, you know, definitely spoke some great. Yeah. Great gems. I like being on a high frequency like this because people think you know my podcast is just bullshit all day. I can throw the bullshit in there. Yeah, I can match, balance. Yeah, I can. It's balance. I tell people <laughs> I match the energy of my co-hosts, yeah. of my guests. Like that's yeah. all this podcast is. I just match the energy and frequencies mm-hmm. and go from there. And this was a high frequency one, so we spread it to the people, and I know that they feel it. So I appreciate cool, you cool, for that. Cool. I appreciate you. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm a t- I'm a tag all of Renee's, um, her IG handles, uh, her website. Her content, her podcast, everything's going to be in a bio where you can find her. Um, do you have any closing words for any for everybody tuning in? I just appreciate you for having me on here. Like, there is no mistakes in timing and divine guidance. Yeah. So I, I am grateful to be able to, you know, share the things that I've learned on my journey. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to just keep moving and moving. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for tuning in. Of course, we couldn't do this without y'all. <laughs> So until next, oh, go ahead and like, subscribe, all this. Get really connected with yeah, this. Really subscribe so that way every episode that can every episode that comes out, you can you know be the first to be alert of it because 2024 this shit is doing something. I'm trying to tell y'all right now. So yeah. make sure that you're a part of the wave and not left behind, getting caught in the tide. <laughs> That was off top. I'm impressed with myself. Come on, bars. Well, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. Oh, wait. Two fingers right here.